Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's nine o'clock, it's time for another video. And today, I'm gonna to revisit a, a video I did about a year ago. Now, about a year ago, I did a video and it was all about what's in Craig's close-up case. And I literally dissected my close-up case. I took the things out one at a time and I talked about what I have in there and why it's in there and so on and so forth. Um, very, very popular video. People wanted me to do more because everyone knows I've got multiple close-up cases and I am gonna do another one. But I thought what I'd do today, I kind of took an opportunity. I'm in the office. It's a Friday. Matt has a gig tonight. He's leaving straight from uh, straight from here to go and do a close-up job. So he's brought his close-up case in with him. Now, he's on the sales desk at the moment, currently busy selling stuff. And I've grabbed his close-up case and I've said, hey, I want to do a video where I dissect your close-up case. And he said, fine, just put it back um, where it needs to be. So on this video, I'm going to be looking through Matt's close-up case and telling you exactly what's in here. I think this is going to be really interesting because here's the thing. Everyone knows, and if you don't, I'm going to explain to you now, Matt's only been doing magic for a little while. He's worked with me for years. He's got a background as an entertainer, as a, um, as a, as a uh, actor, as a singer, as a musician. Uh, and he's always had a love of magic. And the early videos on Magic TV, you'll have seen Matt freaking out. Well, I did something called The Matchumentary, season one, season two coming soon. And um, it was all about taking Matt from a muggle to a magician. And off the back of doing that matchumentary, he now goes and does gigs and does an amazing job. I've been with him at a few gigs. He's got a gig tonight. He's got a gig tomorrow. He's, he's busy. He's doing great. Um, it's the advantage of working at Slightly Unusual, right? We get an absolute metric ton of gigs and he gets a lot of them. Um, but here's the thing. He's still new into magic. He's only been doing it a few months. Um, he's great at presenting. He's great at taking something simple and really just kind of showcasing it. Um, and so I don't think I'm going to see much that involves sleight of hand in this video. So I think this is going to be really interesting. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what's in here. It's probably not going to be much that involves sleight of hand, but I've got a feeling that there's going to be tricks in here, uh, that he can literally use to play really big. The other thing is, um, a lot of the close-up jobs that he does is either sort of banquet tables or strolling. So I think I'm going to see a lot of practical stuff in here as well. Um, but let's have a look at him. Let's have a look in Matt's close-up case. He said, do you want me to jump on the video? And that, that We're down members of staff today. And I'm like, no, we need people on sales, mate. I'll figure it out. He's like, what if you don't know what the trick is? I said, I'll work it out. So hopefully I'll be able to work it out. But if you like this video, I might do a follow-up video with Matt talking about why he's got that. I'm going to talk about why I think it's in there and if it's a good trick or not, but then we'll get Matt to come in and we'll get Matt to give his two pence worth as well. So let's go for it. Lots of stuff in here. Now I know what this is straight away. So at the top, and you can see, I mean, I took a photo of his close-up case. You can see there's a lot of playing cards. There are other things, but there are a lot of playing cards. And anybody who's watched the channel knows that Matt gravitates towards um uh mentalism as opposed to magic although he does do magic um he wanted to just do mentalism and i pointed out to him there's certain gigs where mentalism isn't going to work as well as magic and uh, uh he completely agrees with me so he does do magic but his focus is mentalism um this is my routine from boombox so boombox by andrew niner which is one of the best tricks of all time uh i was involved in the production of that. I created a lot of the routines and did the tutorial. Andrew's a genius. I've spoken about this before. One of the routines I did on there, Matt absolutely loves. It's an any card at any number with two decks. So the whole idea is that you have um, you have a red deck, you have a blue deck. Um, I've done uh, videos about this on the channel. The blue deck has numbers on them. They're all different numbers, genuinely are random. These cards can be shuffled by the spectator. The red deck is taken and put to one side and you say, you've got a prediction there. So you take the red deck and put it to one side. They pick any two cards out without looking. One represents the number, one represents the card. They have a free choice. They can switch them out right at the last second. They turn them over and whatever the card and the number is, you count down in this deck and the cards at that number. Really strong trick. I've seen Matt do this many, many times. He nails it. I don't think he uses the boom box for anything else, but he uses it for that all of the time. So that's that. Uh, what do we have here? Well, here we have, and I'm not surprised, we have Cheeky. Um, so if you don't know what Cheeky is, it's my, uh, it's a collection of routines with the Cheek to Cheek deck. Um, and I put this out with Alakazam last year. 
and I've seen Matt use this as well. Uh, I'm not surprised this is a self-working triumph. And I said, a lot of the things that you're going to see Matt do, I think, are not going to involve sleight of hand. There are going to be stuff. He is learning sleight of hand. I'm teaching him almost every day sleight of hand. And he is adding stuff using sleight of hand, as you can see. Um, but uh, this is very, very easy. It allows you to do uh, almost miracles with a regular deck of cards. And also, it's designed for strolling, so there's no table required and all that fun stuff. So I'm really not surprised to see Cheeky in there. Let's see if he resets his trick, shall we? <gasps> this must be a spare one, because this one hasn't even been opened. I know he performs it, because I've seen him perform it at gigs. So I've told him, whether he's taking this on board or not, I don't know, but I've told him if you really like a trick, you want to have a backup in your case. Uh, or a backup that you own because if you lose it or it breaks and you'd really like it and it's not available anymore you're going to be in trouble so you know that's we'll see we'll see if there's another cheeky now that's cheeky uh what do we have here there's a whole bunch of loose cards here let's have a look at what they are i think these are just a collection of random playing cards i don't think there's much going on here uh, they look like just the jokers and the advertising cards out of um a variety of different decks 1914 deck I don't think that there's anything special about those cards, but we'll we'll get back to that later on. Okay, what's and there's another one there. What's this? What do we have here? Oh, we have a quantum deck. Okay, so we have a quantum deck here set up for the four of hearts. Quantum deck is amazing. Um, I'm not surprised that I'm seeing a lot of my magic. I think we're going to see a lot of other stuff as well, but I'm I'm not surprised I'm seeing a lot of my magic just because. I'm the guy that's kind of trained Matt, right? Now he does, he watches a lot of other stuff that's uh, that's nothing to do with me now, but I still taught him how to do magic. So a lot of the stuff that I taught him was my material. And also I've been teaching him to dem on the magic TV stand as we start to do more conventions moving forward. So it would make sense that a lot of the stuff that he does would be mine. But I mean, the quantum deck, I don't need to talk about it. It's hard, hard hitting, really heavy, uh, works, brilliantly in the real world and i'm very not surprised that's there okay so that's the quantum deck um let's move off the cards for a minute and let's go on to the uh some of the other stuff in here so we have a um these are the 1914 billets uh which again i'm not surprised at because uh he does a lot of um mentalism and these are the perfect cards for billet work so, um, and I can see that quite a few of them have been used in there. So that would make sense. I'd love to, I haven't seen him work with billets. I know he has, he's told me. I've not seen him work with them. I'd like to know what he does with billets. In fact, we should bring him in. Definitely do another video. Tell me if you want to do a follow-up video where he talks about these tricks as well. I think that'd be really interesting. Right, what else have we got? We have here, ooh, I know you picked this up at Blackpool. Um, this is the new Peak Wallet. Um, by Gaz Lawrence and Mark Mason, uh, JB Magic. Uh, this came out at Blackpool. A lot of people were buzzing about this. This is a really nice, really, really nice peak wallet. Um, works really, really well. It's um, very slim line, just fits in your wallet pocket, doesn't take up any space, and it's a really, really realistic looking wallet. And you, you, you literally just put it on their hand. And as you pick it up to put it on somebody else's hand, you get the peak. I did a review show special on this. This is amazing. So uh, I'm, it's interesting that that's the peak wallet he uses. I know he does quite a few things with peaks. Uh, so you've got peaks and you've got billets. And then down here, what's this? Oh, this is a great trick. This is a great trick. This is, oh, there's a couple of tricks in here. What do we have? Okay. Ah, interesting. Is that what I think it is? Yes, it is. Okay, so he's got um, he's got he's got a wild card here, set up for ten of hearts and and sorry, ten of spades and jack of hearts. So he's got wild card, which is a classic. You know, wild card is amazing. Um, and then this, if you don't know what this is, this is brilliant. This is a really good trick. We, me and Ryland reviewed this. This is called mirror eyes. And if you don't know what this is, the idea is that you take these 10 random looking cards out, you give five to one person, you keep five, and it's like a do as you do as I do thing, where the two cards that you and the, per the spectator end up picking are the queen of spades. And it's kind of a magician in trouble, stroke leading them up the garden path type thing, because um, after you have that, 
uh, they're led to believe that all the cards are the Queen of Spades and you go, no, it's all done with mirrors and they look at every other card and they've all got a mirror on them. And then the mirrors and the cards are all examinable and you just do that and they go back into the original order and they're reset, ready to go again. Both of these tricks instantly reset. That's really good. Like you got, I could see Matt playing that up with a mentalism slam really well. Mirror Eyes is great. If you don't know it, go check it out, it's great. So really good stuff here, isn't it? I'm gonna put Mirror Eyes back. I've done that section right there, so that can go back. The billets can go back. We'll put the billets back in there, perfect. Right, moving along, what have we got? Let's go back to the playing cards for a bit. Um, we got a uh, Divine deck. I don't even know what this is. I think he picks it up at Blackpool. I don't see, I think this is just a deck of cards. I'm looking for a particular order. No, there's no particular order that I can see. No gimmicks. No, I think this is just a deck of cards, which I'm not surprised. I've been teaching Matt. He does Ambitious Card now. Um, he also does, uh, he does about seven or eight card tricks with a regular deck. Um, the Back in Time by Jay Sankey, which is one of the first tricks that I taught him, he does all of the time. And he likes, because he's kind of a, a, a rocker, you know, you've seen the look that he has. Uh, these kind of types of cards really suit him. Um, and I think... This is another regular deck of cards. Yes, it is. Um, so he's got a few regular decks of cards here, different brands. This one here is a vintage label, premium company, something like that. He likes his funky cards. What do we have here? I reckon this is the same. The, this, uh, the Darren Brown deck. This is a beautiful deck of cards. Um, beautiful deck. And again, oh, no, right, okay. I've said in the past that he does a lot with, uh, with Stebbins, with the Stebbins stack. Uh, he does a lot from my Beyond the Stebbins uh, project. Well, this is set up in Stebbins. So in other words, I can get somebody to pick a card and um, I can uh, tell you it's a six of diamonds. Boom. So yeah, so this is Stebbins. Um, and he, I imagine, and it's interesting he's got this in a Darren Brown box. I imagine from Matt's point of view, this would be a presentational thing uh, because uh, he really goes full on with the mind reading when he does um, uh, when he does the stepping stuff. It's all about bod uh, reading people and looking for facial tics and that sort of thing. So having them in a Darren Brown box would probably allow him to be able to really dial down and go big on that style of presentation. Right, and then finally we have here, we have my favorite deck of cards, Providence deck. Um, what do we have here? Uh, this is set up for Stebbins as well. This is another deck that's set up for Stebbins. Not surprising because he it, it, Stebbins is a big thing for him in a gig. So if um you know somebody dropped it he wouldn't want to be there sorting his cards out in a gig so it would make sense that you would have a couple of decks of cards set up in stebbins so if somebody did drop it he could literally just go to his case and switch it out for the next one interesting right okay so that's what we've got there let's move on let's go back to this section let's have a look here what do we have here so um we've got um a one ahead pin badge got to be done rory adams the man He's got three sponge balls, three uh, yellow sponge balls that are a little bit dirty. Somebody tell Matt that he needs to clean his balls. Hashtag that. Hashtag clean your balls, Matt. Um, these are regular half dollars, I think. I will check. They look like the half dollars that are supplied in Mirage. The Mirage coin set. Let's have a look. There's a little purse here. Yes, we have a Mirage coin set here. Let me check, just to make sure. Du, 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 du. Yes, is that the Mirage gaff? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, yeah, so this is a Mirage coin set. So he's got the Mirage coin set and he's got some extra coins to go with the Mirage coin set. Now, I don't know if he uses this for any routines. I know he's been learning coin magic. He's been working on the hopping halves. He's been working on coin magic. Whether he actually does this or not, I don't know. I do know he does sponge balls occasionally when there's kids there, uh, but this is not a big thing for him for adults. He gets a bit nervous doing this trick. Um, I think it's a bit out of his comfort zone. I'm not too sure if he does Mirage, but I love the fact that it's in there. Uh, and again, you know, a lot of my material, he learns to demo on the stand, so that would make sense. Um, and then over here in this section, he's got two lighters. I think that's probably because he smokes. I don't think that's got anything to do with the trick, but I could be wrong. Um, oh, we got some good stuff here. So I've seen him use this. This is one of his thousand timers. He's got the Anverdi die uh, by um, um, 
Murphy's Magic, obviously, uh, which is just an incredible version of, of this. So, you know, he's always going to know what number the spectator has picked. The Unbirdy Die is beautiful. And then we have Ammo by Gary Jones. Now, Ammo um, by Gary Jones for his version of Thieves and Sheep is a, an incredible trick. And these are the poker chips that came with Ammo. So Ammo was a, was a project by Full 52. And you got a bunch of gimmicked poker chips and regular poker chips. And there were a ton of routines you could do with it. But the main routine uh, was this thing called Metal Sheep that uh, Gary uh, created, which was a version of Thieves and Sheep, but way more impressive. And I showed it him it, when he was only just getting into magic and he loved it and he started doing it all the time. Um, so I'm not surprised that's in there. So that's that. And there's nothing else in there. That's all we got. There we go. So there's his, uh, there's his poker chips. Right, so I'm finding this really interesting. I hope you are, guys. Let's go back to the playing cards for a bit before we dissect the other sections of his little uh, thing. So what do we have here? Let's go on to the left-hand side, and then we'll finish off in the middle. So what we have here... Are... Oh, I forgot to put those random cards back. I'm pretty sure they are just random. Um, okay, what do we have here? It's a Phoenix deck. Oh, is this out of sight? Yes. So uh, he did the Craig test recently, where he did the Craig test on me. And I gave him Out of Sight by Joshua J. And he performed it on me. If you haven't seen it, go check out the, uh, the Craig test. He performed Out of Sight by Joshua J on me. He really liked that trick. And this is Out of Sight by Joshua J. If you want to see a performance of that, go check out Matt's performance. He did it really well. This is right up Matt Street, from a storytelling point of view and everything. So I'm not surprised that's in there. And this, I'm not going to turn it around because it's going to uh, expose the trick, but this is Peter Nardi's Knock 'em Dead, the one that's only just come out. And again, I'm not surprised that this is in Matt's repertoire. And the reason is, it's, it's a very easy trick to do. There's no skill, but it allows you to give this really killer prediction. Uh, it feels like that you are able to predict anything because there's no force. The spectator really can stop whenever they want to. It's a really strong trick. So um, this, yeah, love this. Very, very good. Um, then we have, uh, interesting. So what we have here, he's obviously not opened it. I imagine he's bought this and not bothered to ever use it. Uh, it looks like a cartoon, but it looks like a bit of a ripoff of cartoon. Um, I don't know, it's not being opened. Should we open it? Should we open it? Let's open it. Let's have a look. It looks like a cartoon ripoff. I don't know if it is or not. Well, maybe it's the real one, but I don't think it is the real one. It might be. This is cartoon. It might be the real one, possibly. This is cartoon, but I don't think he's ever opened it. But um, we'll have to ask him about that because that's really good. Uh, if you don't know cartoon, just check out Jamie Raymond's Raven's performance from years ago on Britain's Got Talent. Uh, you know, when a trick, when a card trick is good enough to get you through to the live rounds of, of Got Talent, you know it's good. Um, Interesting that he's got this. He's never told me he got cartoon or picked up cartoon. He normally tells me, asks my advice on everything, um, and and he obviously hasn't uh, hasn't opened it. So that's kind of interesting. And then we have moving along. I don't know what this is. This is uh, guesswork a little bit. Okay, okay, I know what this is. Um, this is a regular deck of cards, but this is set up to perform. Uh, contact colours or call to the colours or something like that from Eldo Colombini. If you go and look at a mat test, one of the very early mat tests, I did this trick on him and um, he was blown away. And this is one of the first things that made him go, hey, I want to learn that. Um, and he loved it. And I went up, went through with him how it works. It takes a full deck setup. Um, and he loved it and he wanted to learn it. So I'm not surprised that that's in there. And he's got a couple of predictions in there. Uh, go contact colors eldo colombini he's put a little piece of paper in there uh to mark what the name of the trick is just in case he forgets which makes sense so yeah that's uh eldo colombini's um contact colors which is a great trick you can go look at the mat test and um you can get it you can get it from library.com um and it's it's one of the best full deck tricks ever created uh, it's a self-working mirror. I did a video on it as well, as well as doing it on the mat test. I'm pretty sure I did a video on the best self-working tricks of all time, and that was in there. I'm finding this interesting. Right, let's move on. What do we have here? Okay, this is obviously not just a regular deck, but I cannot work out for the... Oh, no, I can. 
It's another Stebbins deck. This is his third Stebbins deck. This is how much Stebbins means to him. Uh, Ace of Hearts. Oh, Spades. Yeah, sorry. Uh, don't use Stebbins very often. <laughs> Especially when... This isn't Stebbins. No, I did get it right. This isn't Stebbins. I think it's Stebbins, but it's not set up. Because look, Ace of Clubs, Three of Diamonds. It shouldn't be Diamonds. It should be Hearts. Six of Spades. It shouldn't be... Spades. Oh, hang on. This is a reverse Stebbins. I think this is a reverse Stebbins. I think this is reverse Stebbins. In which case, it's probably for the um, the any card at any number that um, uh, Mind Effects put out. Daniel Dorian Johnson put it out. Um, can't remember the name of it. It was the one that Iceberg was based on. It was brilliant. It was really, really good. Uh, I think it might be for that. I don't know. Uh, maybe we have to ask him about that. Uh, this is... What we got here? Uh, I don't know. I think this might just be a regular deck of cards. There's no order to it that I can see. There's no order. There's no patterns. It's just a regular deck. Although it is a blue deck in a red box. Which is kind of interesting. I don't think there's anything special about it, as far as I can see. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know about that one. What have we got here? This is a red deck in a red box. And again, ooh, okay. There you go, right. This is the cheeky that he actually uses, right? So there you go. So remember I said this is a backup cheeky, uh, cheeky deck. This is the actual cheeky that he uses. Yeah, it's set up with a floating rotational stack. My my cheat to cheat decks have a couple of extra features, including the floating rotational stack, in order to do a thought of a card triumph, where somebody literally just thinks of a card, never says it, never tells anybody. You shuffle the cards face up into face down, and their card turns over. Um, that's this. So he's got two cheat to cheat decks. There we go. So we know what that is now. Perfect. We're nearing the end. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, and again, please let me know if you want me to get Matt in to do a follow-up video on this, talking about why he does what he does and what tricks he thinks are good and, you know, what he, um, what, uh, what criteria he goes through in order to get a new trick in his show. I think that'd be interesting. Uh, over here, I've been leaving this, but let's just bring this out. This is, and I did this on a Hidden Gems a little while ago, and he loved it so much I actually gave him mine. This is a, um, Wayne Dobson. Walk around, smash and stab. Uh, well, close up, smash and stab. So it's a way of doing smash and stab, but close up. Um, and it's amazing. You, th this is all you need. It just fits in your case or in your pocket. And the idea is that you've got four discs. Um, one of them has a bullet on it. And you get the little sauce things that you get from McDonald's. And you put them on and you just smash your hands down one at a time. Uh, he bought out a big version. I think it was made by Colin Rose. And then the small version came out. Uh, I believe that Wayne's re-releasing it. But this... If you are into mentalism and that sort of thing, and you want to do a danger trick like a Russian roulette, but you want to do it close up, this is the best version I've ever seen. That's great. So we'll do these cards. We'll do this section up here, and then we're done. So down here, we've got some more cards. We've got some more random cards. I don't know what is going on with all these random cards. Let's have a look here. This case is very organized. Oh, okay, hang on. We've got a Wayne Goodman trick here, because uh, there will be four more... Uh, uh, Cards will be equal. There will be four more red cards. Cards will be equal. This is obviously a Wayne Goodman trick. Because he's, he's using Wayne's business cards, randomly. Um, and I know he gets on really well with Wayne. And there's two predictions on the other side. The first prediction says the cards will be equal. And the second prediction says there will be four more red cards. I don't know what this is. I originally, when I first saw these, I thought, well, maybe it's shuffleboard or some variation of shuffleboard, but it can't be um, because he'd need more predictions and the setup wouldn't make sense. But there's obviously, these are set up in order to do something, but I don't know what, and it involves those two predictions. Somebody tag Wayne and get him to tell me what this trick is. I'm sure it's something to do with Wayne Goodman, unless he's randomly using Wayne's business cards um, for no reason at all. I think this is just another speciality deck that he, uh, he uses. I don't think there's anything special. My God, these are funky. I don't think there's anything special about these. Look at the faces of those. They're crazy, right? That's, that's mad. Um... 
Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything special about those. Just a speciality deck. Moving on, we have the Day of the Dead bicycle cards. Again, he's really into this sort of stuff. Uh, I reckon it's just a regular deck. Uh, yes, there's no setup as far as I can see. Right, okay, nothing going on there. Boring. What do we have here? Another one, uh, Series 1900 playing cards and bicycle. Again, I'm willing to bet that there's nothing going on here. Uh, this is just a funky deck. He's really into um, his presentation. He's really into hooking people in and creating really strong presentations. And I'm willing to bet any time he pulls one of these decks out, uh, he will be, um, you know, telling some sort of story about how he got it or something like that. Ooh, this is a good one. If you don't know this, this is Eliminator 2.0. I did a review on this. I also did a, um, a Magic Live on it a while ago. Uh, it's really good. It's by uh, Alakazam. You can get it immediately now. It's in stock. It's by Ad Adrian Sullivan. Um, this effect has only been shared with a few select few in the past. Uh, and it's, it is incredible. You know, you have two people freely select cards, um, uh, and, uh, and put them away, put them away. And you're instantly able to, uh, find them in one hand from your pocket in one second. It's really strong. Go check it out. Eliminator 2.0. It's a, it's a very underground trick. Many, many, it's a bit like a hidden gem. Many, many years ago, everyone did this, but now... Not so much. So if you don't know it, go check it out. Eliminator 2.0. Really good. Uh, here we have... Oh, this is weird. What's this? He's got like a, a torn corner here. I was thinking it was angle zero, but it's it's not. It's stuck there with wax. What's going on here? And then there's a card bent over like this. Um, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is at all. You've got a kind of what looks like a gaffed card here because both corners fold inwards. And then you've got this card here where you've got a torn corner. almost like, and, and then there's another corner bent in here, almost like you're doing a angle zero type thing or an intercessor. I don't know. We need to ask him about this. Um, the uh, This is an elite deck from Penguin, so it's going to be marked. But other than that, I don't think there's anything special about it. Oh, hang on. We've got something going on here. Oh, hang on. Is this? Yep. Okay. Is that just his hand? His cards are dirty, or is there a reason for that? Um, there's got to be a reason for that, but I don't know what it is. There's some sort of trick going on here, because we've got a duplicate queen on the top of the deck, and we've got like a bit of uh, roughing going on on this particular card. I don't know. Again, not 100% sure. Oh, hang on. That's interesting. Someone help me what this trick is. These, these cards are in mirror stack. So if you go down 26, you see the nine of clubs and you see the nine of uh, uh, spades. Then the next card is the six of hearts and the six of diamonds. Next card is three of clubs, three of diamonds. Oh, hang on. Is this another Stevens deck? Yes, it is. It's a Stevens deck. Six, nine, yeah. King, three. Yeah, it's a Stevens deck. I think it wasn't that, 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 that. There is some roughing on one card. So this is a Stevens deck and one card's being roughed. Not the whole deck like my Beyond Stevens project, but one card. Very interesting. Don't know what that's for. Right, okay. So those are all the cards. We're going to go into that section now and then we are done. What you're seeing here is a guy that's going out and working a lot. I know how many gigs uh, Matt gets. He gets a lot of gigs, right? And he's going out and working, and he's probably busier than most magicians. And he's getting a lot of flight time, paid flight time, which is amazing. Um, so you're seeing the stuff in here that works from his point of view. This is the stuff um, that works in the real world. Um, and, and it's all very, very easy. I told you it would be. Um, and look, I think it's really important to become better. And he is. Every day he's learning new tricks, as you can see. He didn't even have a close-up case a few months ago. Um, when I say make yourself better, there's a few ways of doing that. It doesn't have to be learning every single slight under the, uh, under the you know, roof. It could be just increasing your repertoire, having more tricks. Uh, I sent him to a gig a little while ago where there were 10 people for two hours. With this sort of thing, he'll be absolutely fine. Anyway, let's go into this bit and then we're done. Okay, so we have EDC. 
very well used. I know he uses this a lot at gigs. He loves EDCs. He combines it with iForce. Um, and um, you can see that the receipts are really well done. Uh, yeah, EDC is amazing. He's also got his smashed up phone. He, uh, when he started doing magic, he was on Android and uh, he bought an old iPhone because he wanted to do a lot of the tricks that you need an iPhone in order to be able to do. Uh, but he's now upgraded to an iPhone. So he probably just has that as a backup or something or just doesn't want to get rid of it. Then you have uh, a blindfold, no idea. Um, then you have a, a playlist by me and Alakazam Magic. If you don't know Playlist, Playlist is really good. It went under the radar of a few people. It came out about a year and a half ago. It's a real little EDC item. It's uh, music download cards. Um, so it's um, designed to look like those old cards that you found in service stations where you could download a track for free. Um, and they're marked and they allow you to do a bunch of stuff like ESP matchup routines. And there's a really nice QR code divination in there. Uh, using a new principle that allows you to do a multiple out on the spectator's phone using a QR code, which is really cool. Matt is totally into music, uh, being a musician. So anytime he can bring that into his presentations, he will. And this is a way to do that. So I'm not surprised that he's got a playlist in there. If you don't know it, check it out. Uh, oh, right. So this is Past, Present and Future by Rick Lax and Penguin Magic. Matt doesn't believe in uh, tarot at all. Um, but his presentation for this is great because he brings it out and he says, hey, does anyone know what this is? It's a tarot deck, right? Do you believe in it? I don't. I think it's rubbish. But let me show you something. Uh, when you, If you go back and look at the match your entry, he actually did this at Smoke and Mirrors uh, uh, and he did a great job of it. And uh, I'm not surprised that's there. It's probably not the sort of trick you do in a strolling situation. This is kind of more of a pipe and slippers type trick, um, but it definitely fits him. Um, we've got a bag. Don't think there's anything in there. Uh, we've got a phone charger, which is obviously to charge his phone. We have a Sharpie, normal. We have, ooh, I'm really not surprised that this is in here. I'm really, really not surprised. Um, what we have here is we have trivia. So trivia is another trick that I put out through Alakazam. I wonder if he's even made his own little um, prediction. How sweet. Uh, and it's, uh, it's basically a book test built into uh, movie trivia cards. So you can have somebody, you know, there's 10 facts on each card, there's 100 facts all together over the 10 cards, about 10 or 15, 20 words on each fact, so there's something like two or 3,000 words on these cards. And then what happens is somebody picks a card without you seeing it, they then pick a fact without you seeing it, they pick a word without you seeing it, and you've predicted the card that they've picked, you've predicted the film that they're thinking of, the word that they're thinking of, and there's no fishing, you immediately know. You know the word that they're gonna think of before they even think of it, even though there's no force. And uh, and then for the second phase, you get them to do it again, and you've predicted the word that they uh, think of. Incredible. Uh, this is one of my favorite routines to perform, actually. I love this. I'm so proud of this. Um, and then we have The Grail by Mike Rose. The Grail is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, I'm thinking that one of those decks over there was The Grail. It's got to be, right? Um, I just missed, the, you know, the, the the one particular thing that would make me realise it's the Grail. But I imagine, because it's not in here, I imagine that one of these decks is the Grail. And the Grail is amazing. And then you've got here one of Matt's favourite tricks of all time. Let me get it out. That's the last thing in here. We have Lux. Lux by Lloyd Barnes. And Lux is incredible. I know Lux, uh, some people loved it, some people hated it. I said it was one of the best tricks of all time. I actually said it's probably the best trick of the decade. I stand by that. I love it. I perform it all of the time. Matt performs it all of the time. Ryland performs it all of the time. Lux is sick. The stuff you can do with it is just second to none. I think it's uh, one of the things that will go down as uh, one of the best creations you know in the last decade now you might disagree with me and that's absolutely fine and I've had people that have turned around to me and said oh it doesn't work in the real world same thing that people said about the quantum deck but here's the thing I use it in the real world almost every gig so does Ryland and so does Matt you know and between us we're busy so I don't know I think it's amazing that's that's all I've got to say about that there's going to be other stuff as well that's not in this case he's got a lot of apps on his phone and uh, stuff that he'll probably have in his jacket pocket or something. But what we have here is the majority of his 
close-up acts. A few things that I've learned from this. One, he obviously, and we knew this before, but this just, um, uh, th this drives it home. He focuses on... Uh, he focuses on mentalism. There's a lot of mentalism related stuff in there. There's a lot of mentalism that you can do strolling and walk around. Stuff like trivia, stuff like playlist, billets, all of that stuff will work. So there's a lot of mentalism style routines in there. But there's also some magic-y stuff in there. The, the, the Mirage coin set, the sponge balls, uh, some of the decks of cards are very magic based. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it shows... The, you know, I don't think he does much with a regular deck. He does like five, five, six, seven routines with a regular deck. But I think if he had a choice and he went over to a group and he could choose anything, he probably wouldn't choose stuff with a regular deck of cards. He'd probably choose something else. Um, uh, and, and it shows that you can actually go and do a gig very, very successfully just by taking an absolute metric ton of tricks. And that's absolutely fine. Um, and I think the, the, the point is, and I've talked about this many, many times on this channel, you've got to improve. You've got to get better. You know, if you're not moving ahead, you're falling behind, right? And, and, and people assume that getting better involves uh, learning new slights, which it doesn't. You know, you know, you can get by without doing sleight of hand, but um, what it does involve a lot of the time is improving yourself, whether that be improving your presentations, improving your repertoire, and not being scared to put new tricks into your repertoire. I meet people who do the same, same, same tricks, same tricks every single time. Uh, five tricks, that's all they do, and they do those five tricks and they do nothing else. Well, you know, I think if you can improve and constantly get better and be like Matt, I think that that's the best way to do, do it, because then you're going to ultimately be... Um, you know, you're going to have better magic that you can show to the people that you're performing for. But I found this really interesting. For everybody who wanted to see what's inside Matt's close-up case, this is what's inside Matt's close-up case. Um, do you want to see a follow-up video? Do you want me to sit here with Matt talking about some of this stuff? Because if you do, we can do that as a follow-up video. I'm sure he would be fine with it. Uh, let me know. But as it's And also, do you want me to do this with somebody else's? I could get Nemed Phoenix to bring his case in. I could get Wayne Goodman to bring his case in. I get magicians here all the time. I can do it with Ryland's close-up case. It could be a new feature. What's in the close-up case? Would you like to see another video like this? If you would, let me know in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this? Like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And if you want to join the Netrix, please go to www.thenetrix.com. That's www www.thenetrix.com go and get access to hundreds and hundreds of tricks and slights and moves and theory and discussions and all that fun stuff i'll be back again soon thank you so much for watching my name is craig from magic tv mm.